Mockbusters. We've all had our grandparents get us one of the, these from the dollar bin, from the dollar tree at some point or another. Movies like Transmorphers, Snakes on a Train, Avengers Grimm, and most notoriously, Ratatouille. However, among all the terrible blockbuster knockoffs, one company wore the crown for being the laziest of them all. One German-based film company stood tall and said, Hey, we can do little to nothing and make the room look like Citizen Kane or Gone with the Wind. That is, Dingo Pictures. The company for having the laziest Disney ripoffs known to man. I have watched a good chunk of them, some by my own morbid curiosity, some by YouTuber Phalus. I'll be posting a link to his Dingo Pictures playlist in the description if you want to check full in-depth reviews on how bad these are. Today, we are going to be ranking the movies based on a level of how much I wanted to shoot myself in the head, with one being the worst of the worst, in alphabetical order. Aladdin. This is one of the four movies in this list that is dubbed the absolute worst of all of Dingo Pictures movies. It is also the longest of them all, clocking in at over an hour long. This is the hardest one to sit through, even if you are truly curious. I cannot on any good faith tell you guys to watch this. The dub is horrendous, the looping background track is annoying, just an absolute train wreck in the worst possible way, and unlike a real one, I'd recommend that you do look away. 1 out of 10. Anastasia. Rip off of Don Bluth's movie. One of the few non-Disney <laughs> movies that Dingo decided to slaughter. This is where you get the standard dub that Dingo is well more known for. This one also has an obscene amount of laughing shots that are randomly inserted in their movies just to pad out their stories. It is not the worst thing ever, but kind of boring just to sit through. Though I can see people getting a kick out of the human designs of these freaks. 3 out of 10. Animal Soccer World. This is Dingo Pictures' most notorious film. Remember that soccer scene in Bedknobs and Broomsticks? What if we drag that out to an ungodly amount of time with, an, with a dumb reason to have a soccer match that takes it way too long to get to, only to end in a tie? Then you get this movie. This is also film number two that has a really bad dub in it, as well as the looped background music. Just a slog to get through, but can be funny to watch. And if you like BDSM ducks, you're in for a treat. Five out of ten. Balto. For whatever mo reason, this movie is also known as Brave the Husky. Balto isn't brave in this in the slightest. He even wants to let the kid die. Plus, sometimes even the villain of this movie is called Balto. Plus, the name pronunciation is Balto, Balto, Bolto, Greg. Call him what you want. Plus, we have a very intrusive polar bear and seal who offer nothing to the story. They're nowhere near as funny as the polar bears from the original Balto. They weren't even very funny to begin with. Still not the worst. 4 out of 10. Bremontown Musicians. Number 3 of movies on this list that have that horrible dub, but no looping track this time around. Instead, it has live action scenes of a very intrusive narrator, who also cracks up when he talks about poop. Seriously. This is one I don't remember the most, but it's not good due to the dub. 2 out of 10. The Countryside Bears. You remember that time Disney made a movie about an animatronic bears? You don't. Well, neither do a lot of people. Yet Dingo decided to take that and adapt it to a Winnie the Pooh style video. Plus, we also get to see Wabu, the raccoon with kangaroo-like attributes. More on him later. But these bears suck. The main bear is an emo asshat. One yodels cause his mom hated him. Two have the exact same voice, and one is a total tool. Plus, the end is a recycled story from a plot line from a movie we'll get to see later. But I do like how we get to see these bears, these bees, pollinate. 7 out of 10. Dalmatians 2. 
Finding this and its sequel in physical format is such a headache that I don't have the brain power to explain its incompetency. Check out Phelis' video videos on these if you want thorough explanation. This also isn't really even a movie. It's a flashback movie. That alone hinders this. Why give us a flashback of stuff as your first movie? 5 out of 10. Dalmatians 3. This is the real, real movie to Dalmatians 2. The audio sounds like it was ripped off one of those Game Boy Advance video cartridges. I had the fairly, late, fairly odd parents and Spongebob ones. Oh yeah, the movie. There's an 8 minute flashback dedication to the last movie, which doesn't help out whether, whether or not you've seen the first one. But at least we get to see the dogs trotting like horses. That made me chuckle. 3 out of 10. Dinosaur Adventure. Here's one I've watched the most of them all, and I'm sure you've seen this at some point. This is one of the few that doesn't fully reuse characters from their previous works. It does have a bird that seems to have never been sexually pleased in quite some time, and is in more heat than the Miami Heat. Long one, but not insufferable. 7 out of 10. Goldie, the Bambi knockoff. Very, very forgettable. 1 out of 10. Hunchback of Notre Dame blatantly tells you what you're in for. This one gets credit for actually being somewhat correct with the original source material. Though this one has nuns that encourage baby immolation. So take that for what that means. I mean, if it was Quasimodo's dad, I would hide, in the, hide him in the basement or let him get raised by a group of platypuses. And don't forget, and don't get on your high horse and tell me I'm awful, because we all know you do the same thing. 4 out of 10. Janice the Little Pig. One of the very few of these movies to not get a PlayStation treatment. Strictly DVD. And for one good reason. There's little to no story, and when it does come, it gets super dark, super abruptly, but gets light even faster. And all it does is make me want some bacon. I'm fat. I like bacon. Bacon is good. And bacon... And if bacon came from Janice's corpse, it'd be even sweeter. 8 out of 10. Lion and the King. Imagine Mufasa banished Scar to the elephant graveyard due to the ownership of diamonds. And Scar ditched his hyena horde for gorillas. Then Simba became friends with Scar's bastard kid. That's the plot of this movie. 4 out of 10. My God! Lord of the Jungle. This is a death roller coaster compared to the Disney one. Dingo decided to show the parents die in a fiery plane crash. Disney decided to show the gorillas. Disney showed Clayton die. The hunter in this one got away. This also has the professor character with a very unfitting voice. 2 out of 10. Mouse Police. This is honestly the one I can't think of that reuses character animation at all, or any character lookalikes. And that's due to the fact that they're all mice. This is one I've watched the most because of how nonsensical it is. With its characters, a mafia plot, and one of the worst animated scenes I've ever seen. Sure. Coward. I'm from the Chicago area, and I know about mafias. This ain't no mafia. Capone would roast your ass before you could move a speck of cheese. Yet it's about as good as The Room, or The Christmas Tree, or Birdemic. 10 out of 10. Nice Cats. Probably the only Aristocats knockoff in existence, so it's hardly a 5 out of 10 for that. But when one of your main characters uh, curses in your kids movie within the first minute, it doesn't necessarily make it on the same level as its, as its Disney counterpart. Hell, there's even a cat pedophilia in it. So, having, so have fun explaining that to your kids. And it only has one voice actor in it, so that makes it slightly less aggravating. 6 out of 10. Pocahontas. Well, we got Wabu back, and he's drunk. Plus, there's a talking bush instead of a tree. Also didn't know that hyenas and vultures were a thing in unsettled America. Why didn't our teacher, teachers tell us this? 
the American education system really is going down the crapper thanks to this historical accuracy. 4 out of 10. The Puss on Boots. You know, I've never really liked this whole story myself. Any iteration. I like Antonio Banderas' portrayal as him in Shrek, but never been a huge fan of this fairy tale itself. So why would I like the dingoes telling? Plus, Puss and Boots is in the public domain, so it's rather pointless to alter the title. 5 out of 10. Sword of Camelot. This one has the unique feature of having live-action narration, much like Bremen Town Musicians had. But unlike that one, this one has one of the usual voice actors for this. This is also one of the shortest and often most forgotten of Dingo's collections. 2 out of 10. Toys. Much like Nice Cats, this one is all done by one voice actor, narrated to us like a story. But what I don't understand is why does a boy have a baby doll that just cries and cries. Unlike Buzz and Toy Story, this baby doll is a prick just to be a prick. And boots the ratty, buck tooth, cat in the hat abomination to the streets, which also features nightmare fuel trash cans. Yes, nightmare fuel trash cans. Three out of 10, Wabu. I finally get to talk about this damn raccoon. This is essentially the mascot for Dingo since he was prominent in three movies, counting this one, and was in one. Unfortunately, the English version of this is that dub from Aladdin and Bremen Town Musicians. And it gets bad. I'm gonna show you a small portion of this movie, and keep in mind that I did not edit this scene. This story also focuses mainly around the tail end of the countryside bears. So Wabu hijacked another movie. Good job. 4 out of 10. Wow, you made it through. Thanks for checking out this video. I gotta go read some college textbook and eat some fish, since I'm pretty sure I lost some brain cells watching these for your amusement. But before I do, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. I'm also at Twitch at twitch.tv slash pandapad234. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well. See you next time. Later, Gators.